it's great to see Booker T at, at Starcast. And uh, he's growing his hair I, out a little. <laughs> I guess he has. Great to see his wife Shamel, who was, of course. Uh, Wait, I'm sorry. What was her name? Shot one is Shamel. Okay. It's not her. It's not his wife's name. <laughs> That's fine, sucker. Uh, <laughs> this, well, anyway, she was a nitro girl, and she's and great. great. Yes. What, what about this what about belt this he's belt? wearing here? It's my least favorite oh. WCW belt ever. Really? It's the squiggly line belt. The squiggly line belt. Oh my God. Some of these white people raising the roof have no idea how to do it. Can you, can we get you to post a video Wednesday on uh Twitter of you raising the roof just so you can demonstrate the Tony Schiavone way? Yeah, I can do it. I think that'd be great. I'll have hey. my earrings in. I'll have my Jesus piece out. Oh, I have geez. all my, uh, by the way, I, on. I forget okay. who told me this, but someone approached me oh, in God. Las Vegas. It may have been, it may have been Casio. Mm. Oh, shit. and he said, may not have been, but he said, I really thought it was just a gimmick. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, you know, with Shivani, I thought it was all just like theater of the mind. I said, what are you talking about? He said, you're fucking ragging on him for having these diamond earrings and this go the gold chains and all that. He's like, that's just for real. I'm like, yeah. He's like, he's not doing it. He's not wearing it. Like ironically, I'm like, no, like he's just, he's wearing it. He's like, are we going to tell him? I was like, I told him he's like, nah, he thinks it's a bit for the show. I thought it was a bit for the show. Oh, I was like, geez. no, no. He knows he looks like a fucking dumbass, and he's comfortable hey, oh, with it. Hold on a second. Fucker. First of all, how do you wear something ironically? Um, it's, okay. it's like, it's like a okay. ugly sweater, ugly Christmas sweater contest. Okay. Like you're not wearing it. Cause you think it looks cool. You're wearing it because you know, it's awful and you you want how awful it is to like, right. You, you know, pop the crowd. Yeah. And that's not what you're doing. Like you're not wearing that to impress these motherfuckers. You just, just being Tony Schiavone, being a badass, rolling around with some CZs, baby. I got that middle of the mall shit going. <laughs> no, that ain't platinum girl. That's sterling silver. You don't know nothing about that. Let me, can I tell you why I wore the, uh, the, uh, the earrings because and why, you, I'm wearing, but, why I'm wearing all this stuff. The real reason behind that, because you can, well, yeah, though, so, of course, because I can, but because I like Conrad, you know this by now, but I'm a weird fucker. That's a fact, Jack. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a weird fucker. Okay. And I, you know how I realized how weird I was. How weird were you? Well, I, <laughs> when I realized it, I realized how weird I was in, in Las Vegas. I was just, I just, I was just weird. I just, I'm, I'm a, I'm a loner. I know it, like you're invited to our Starcast wrap up dinner, right? You know, we, uh, invited uh, most of the production staff and, uh, my, my mom and dad, and, uh, of course the misses and we got everybody there and you're not there and don't want to come. Well, first of all, I didn't know anything about the wrap up dinner. I didn't know anything about it. And as soon as the, as soon as the, the shows were done, I hopped into a cab or hopped to Uber and I went down to uh, to downtown and I sat at a bar at the D hotel and ate a steak by myself and drank a few Moscow mules. Thank you, JR. Why would Forget you do that instead of hanging with us? I don't know. I, 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 I didn't know you guys were doing anything. I really didn't. So you didn't, but you didn't ask. No, I didn't. I mean, we were still packing up and then when we got done packing, then it was time to go. And so, right. By that point, I just assume you're working on the show somewhere. And I'm like, oh, fuck that. It can wait two hours. Come eat. And you're like, nope. Okay. No, I just, I just went down, got something to eat. And then I went back to the hotel room and worked on the show. I, and I just, I'm just, uh, weird. I'm weird. I'm just a loner. Oh, by I mean, the way, can I just tell you that one of the low key MVPs of uh Starcast is uh Matt Shivani. I'm very proud of Matt. Very proud. He did a hell of a job. I thank you for saying that he's, uh, he took charge. He really did. He was tremendous, you yeah. know, and, uh, I'm excited to do it again with him. I can't believe I'm doing this dumb shit one more time, uh, but Starcast three 
Chicago. And, uh, I haven't seen, sent you the lineup of the shows, but I think you're going to dig it. Yeah. I, well, shit. I dig anything you do, buddy. But just, just, I just, I'm a weirdo. And I just, I put in those earrings because I knew that you would shit on them. And I knew all you guys would shit on them. And I just, I don't know, for a laugh maybe or a rib or whatever, I just. No, you liked I, it. You had your ears pierced long ago, well, long before I knew you. Exactly. Exactly. And I did that for a rib on Lois because I knew Lois would shit on it. And I got it for my 50th birthday back then. And, and she shit on it. And it's just, it's just, it's just funny to me. And I just, I'm a weird motherfucker. Sorry. I'm just, I'm just odd. No, but you're our odd. You're our, you're like the George Costanza of wrestling. Oh, I'm not. George Costanza of wrestling. Yes. A hundred percent. Maybe. So maybe it's because when I open my billfold, there's nothing but receipts in there instead of money. Is that it? <laughs> oh my God. That's what Costanza used to do. Oh God. Hey, meanwhile, well, I, uh, I just need you to hit somebody with, uh, the jerk store called the jerk store called <laughs> like that's the most Shivani line ever. Oh God. So, but anyway, uh, so yeah, you're, you're, uh, hooked in with a weird guy. And, and, and also I want to, I want to add into this fuck Casio motherfucker. I'm, I was on his podcast on that motherfucker's podcast. He's going to talk about me behind my back. Well, fuck him. Yeah, I agree. Fuck Cassio. <laughs> anyway, he'll be on next week. Yeah. Hey, should we tell everybody what we got coming up? Yeah. You, uh, we uh, came up with a pretty damn good list of stuff coming up. Yeah. We've got, uh, we've got the next several shows wrapped up and I guess we should, um, we should tell everybody we're talking over a pretty good match here. Yes, we are uh, three and a half stars. It's still a little weird to, you know, get super excited about a Chris Benoit match, but this series is really the series that, that kind of put both of these guys on the map. You know, the Booker T had been positioned as a tag team guy. Now he's going to be a single star in this TV title feud he's having here with Chris Benoit. I remember being something that a casual wrestling fan in my life, a very good friend of mine, someone who wasn't really paying attention to wrestling started to get into it a little bit because the NWO was getting hot and things like that. And the first match or the first person he really gravitated to was Chris Benoit. And it was because of this series where he was really? like, oh man, he's my, like, he enjoyed all the wrestling, you know? Uh, oh, I love wrestling. I love nitro and raw and blah, blah, blah. He was getting into it. But when I would say, Hey, who's your favorite wrestler? I'm, I'm expecting in 1998. You know, Steve Austin, I don't know, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, DDP, whatever. He hit me with Chris Benoit, huh? which I thought was, don't get me wrong. I like it. But from a casual wrestling fan standpoint, I assume, oh, he's going to say sting or Lex Luger or whatever, a more established big name guy. I thought Benoit was really more for the hardcores. Right. I was wrong. Uh, so let's run through the shows. Um, here we go. Okay. Clash got, of the champions seven this right. is coming up next week. What do you remember about clash of the champions seven? Well, clash of the champions seven. Wasn't that the one that was on the army base Yes. and they were sweating and the ding dongs were on it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> How do you remember all this? I, and I remember Steamboat was in the main event against Terry Funk. Well, there you go. You've got yeah. uh, the Freebirds and the Midnights, Sting and Bill Irwin, Woo. Mm. Uh, Varsity Club and the Steiner Brothers, Norman the Lunatic and Mike Justice, Terry Gordy and Steve Williams, the Midnights and the Samoan SWAT team. Wow. Uh, mm. The Ding Dongs taking on Cougar J and George South. I wonder who wins there. The free birds and dynamic dudes, Ranger Ross versus the terrorists. That's right. That was actually a wrestler named the terrorists. And in the main event, Ricky steamboat and Terry funk, that goes all the way back to June of uh, 89 at Fort Bragg in North Carolina. So that's, right. what's coming up next week. And that should be fun. I mean, I'm really just excited to talk about ding dongs with you. If I'm honest, <laughs> I mean, it's one of your favorites, right? Well, you know, I was working for the WWE. Look at this. 
Holy shit. He could do it, man. Unfortunately, it led to his demise. But anyway, uh, I, w- I was working at the WWF at that time, and we were laughing at the fact that they were the Ding Dongs. And that was all Jim Hurd and he wanting that, I guess. And, you know, if you, if you say I didn't stand up and say, hey, what about Goldberg? Are we doing the right, wrong thing? Why did anybody stand up and say, hey, what about these fucking Ding Dongs? All right. So then the next week, what we yeah. got coming your way on June 19th right. is a watch along from a June 30th, 1997 episode of nitro. And I know what you're thinking. Uh, that's a pretty random show. Why are we watching that? Right. I, I don't know either. Why are we watching? Ric Flair has two women carry a Roddy Piper mannequin to the ring. Oh my God. Do I need to keep going? No, I think that's, that sells it enough. Like (laughs) I, when I saw that, I was like, well, fuck, that's what we're doing. Mm. I know what we're doing. There's lots of fun stuff on the show though. You know, you've got lots of luchadors and, you know, Eddie Guerrero and Dean Malenko and, you know, uh, Ernest Miller and Billy Kidman. And obviously all the big stars, the Hulk Hogan's and the Scott Steiner's and the DDP's and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I'm pretty excited about a Piper mannequin. That should be fun. Especially if, if Flair had one of the, and I don't remember this, but he could have had one of the girls get down on her hands and knees in front of the mannequin and, you know, give it a pipe job. Oh, what is a, what is a pipe job? <laughs> it's a, you know, a pipe job, a blow job. Wait, who calls it a pipe job? Are you from the fucking, are you like a longshoreman? Are you been working down at the docks? What are you talking about? A pipe job. Hmm. A pipe job is what they'd say at like Jiffy Lube at the transmission place or something. <laughs> Okay. Besides on this, we're trying to clean it up here on the program. We're trying to clean up the program. Yeah. So from now on, we're not going to say blow job. We're not going to say pipe job, but like pipe job just seems weird. We're just going to go. Okay. Just try to suck his dick. How does that sound? Why are we, why are we trying to clean it up? What was, has somebody come down from the, from podcasting heaven and said, Shivani and Conrad Thompson need to clean it up because they're getting too risque or too uh, vulgar on their podcast. Is, is that it? Yes. Why are we trying to clean it up? Yeah. I mean, you nailed it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Now I got a whole list of things we can or can't do if we take a certain sponsorship and I, and I had to pass on it. Oh, okay. Do you want me to read that list? Yes. All right. Let me run you through the rest of the list though. Okay. Uh, the All June 26th, 1999 nitro is what we'll be covering on June 26th. Mm-hmm. And why are we covering that one? Well, go ahead. Uh, Sid vicious wrestles Scott Putzky on this show. DDP <laughs> and Canyon team up against Dean Malenko and buff Bagwell. Ugh. Ernest Miller is going to fight disco Inferno on this one. We've also got Barry Windham, Kendall Windham, Kurt Henning and Bobby Duncan jr. Taking on Brian Adams, Vincent Horace Hogan and Stevie Ray. Cause rap is crap. Bam, bam, go. Bigelow's in there with hack. Eddie Guerrero's in there with Lenny Lane, Perry Sanders and Chris Benoit take on Fit Finley and Dave Taylor. But your main event, are you ready for this? I'm uh, no. Uh, after what you just told me, I don't know if I'm ready for it or not. Go ahead. Kevin Nash versus David Flair for the world title. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on with it. Come on. That's your family, buddy. Tell Ooh. me, I'm not related to Kevin Nash. <sighs> Uh, great American bash 1990, one of the more historic shows in WCW history. We're going to be covering that one on July 3rd. Of course, that's the day before independence day. And I think everybody remembers that show best for sting coming to the ring, dressed like an American flag. And he of course is going to get the win over Ric Flair for the NWA world title underneath it's doom working with rock and roll express. It's mean Mark Callis is going to go on to be the undertaker with Lex Luger. Uh, the dudes with attitudes, which is Elegante, Junkyard Dog, and Paul Orndorff are going to take on Arn Anderson, Barry Windham, and Sid Vicious. The Steiner brothers are going to destroy the fabulous Freebirds. Vader is going to demolish Tom Zink. The Midnights are in there with the Southern Boys, and it's 18 minutes of the best wrestling action you're going to see. Harley Race is in there with Tommy Rich, which feels like it's from 83, not 90. Doug Furness is in there with Dutch Mantel, Mike Rotundo with the Iron Sheik, and Brian Pillman. It's a win over Buddy Landell. Lots of stuff happening on that undercard from Great American Bash 1990. 
Meanwhile, as you're talking about all that, a ref bump, fans were going with this and they did a ref bump out of it, man. Yeah. You guys could fuck up a wet dream. Great Boy, American could we ever. bash 92 is what we're covering the next week, which will be, oh, I, I remember that one. Okay. That's July 10th. Your main event is Terry Gordy and Steve Williams taking on Dustin and Barry Windham. Underneath, right. we've got Sting and Vader. We've also got Dustin and Barry against uh, Haas and Hashimoto. Right. Uh, Terry Gordy and Steve Williams are going to take on Nikita Koloff and Ricky Steamboat. Right. Dustin and Barry are going to take on Austin and Rude. Haas right. and Hashimoto with the Freebirds. Lots of international talent on this one. A tale of two great American bashes. Fair to say? Yeah, that that was a tournament, if I recall. That's right, yeah. For, yeah, for the, for the World Tag Team Championship. And that's why... You got uh, Dustin and Barry wrestling a couple of times, Gordy and Williams wrestling a couple of times too. So yeah, that and tournaments never work. Booker never T work. here gets your win. He's gonna uh, get the win after a pin, uh, three and a half stars. And next up, we've got Kurt wrestling Davy Boy, and there's gonna be an unannounced stipulation where Rick Rude is handcuffed to Jim Neidhart. And oh. um, Meltzer would say after the two previous great matches, not only was this time for a bathroom break. Time to leave your brain in another room. <laughs> really? <laughs> now they're trying to explain the unexplainable. You see, the reason Rude has handcuffs every week and after the angle is over, Doug Dillinger always has the key. And that's because all handcuffs have the same master key. Okay, granted, Dillinger should always carry a handcuff master key because God knows what these guys are doing on the road with handcuffs and sort of emergencies might crop up. That much is understandable. But given all that, because it happens to Smith and Neidhart every week, why don't they carry one of these secret master keys with them as well? At least what? thinking like that distracts you from having to wait until this match is over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never, never try to talk about logic when it comes to this shit. Look at the bump that old Mickey J put took. <laughs> oh, wow. I bet you hate Mickey J. No, I don't hate him. Well, you said you, you liked sensical wrestling and that was a nonsensical bump. So <laughs> you probably put him in a luchador mask and call him super refo. <laughs> no, if Mickey J was told to take a bump, how can I hate Mickey J for, for doing what he's told? <sighs>